Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Beth, and today I just finished reading War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. This was published in 1898, and it's about 200 pages long, so it's a pretty quick read if you enjoy it. <laughs> this is what I will say about War of the Worlds. If you do not know the area, in this case England, especially around London and all those suburbs, you will be lost. <laughs> for most of the novel, because a lot of it is very directional, especially geographically. You just are, if you don't know the area, you're kind of alienated. You don't really understand what he's trying to describe because he's very much comparing this area to this one. This one's fine, this one's not. And you kind of get lost because you're just hit with all of these names and all these different suburbs constantly. If you really wanted to have a better experience, you probably, you know, should just bring up a map while trying to read it and make little notes. I I just kind of let it slip by me because I said, I'm reading this for fun. And I felt like most readers, what they would do is they just take a book and go read it. You don't really have to have a foreknowledge of the area to read something called War of the Worlds. You expect that, you know, the whole entire Earth is going to be a part of this war. But no, I would say that this is ill-named because it really is just a war of England and a few crash landers. It's not the whole world, I would say. It's very much contained in this one area. And I do like that it follows just a very small party of people during this time. So you can kind of get an idea of what the average man kind of was faced with. I was a little confused that it follows, so it follows the narrator. And you get a good understanding of what's going on and, you know, what he's traversing through and how he's making his trek to find his wife. And then, for some reason, for just, I don't know, two, three chapters, we follow his brother. And he's, it's never even tied up at the end. You just follow his brother a few times and say, this is what my brother experienced. And all I'm thinking is, how do you know that? How are you aware? I mean, by the end of it, the brother is completely leaving the territory on a boat. How does he know what's going on with his brother? And especially during this time period, how do you catch up with one another? There's no phones, there's no emails. How do you look someone up? I just don't understand how they reconnect it. Like, maybe he's like, oh, maybe my brother's alive. I should go back to where he was living, you know, before a war to see if he's alive. Maybe that's the case. Maybe that's how they caught up. But it's never explained. And you're only with him for a few chapters, and I'm really just confused as to why it's there. I don't feel like it added much to the book. So another problem this book has, and I've said this before about H.G. Wells, he can get a little shaky cam. I would say that because there's no chase scenes per se in this, it's, it's less shaky cam, but he's not good at staying in on the action. He's very much, he did this, she did this. And you're thinking, who is he? Who is she? Explain who you're talking about, please. So, um, the one thing that is really well described in this book though, if you do know the area of London, I think you'll enjoy it a lot more because H.G. Wells does a great job of explaining the destruction and what is actually being destroyed. I think that was well done. When it comes to the machines, I think he can get a little bit generic. And when I say that, I mean that he's not explaining exactly what's going on with this alien race. He's just kind of using a lot of descriptive words, but no actions. So you don't know what's going on, but you, you can kind of see what it looks like. That That's what I'll have to say about it, but I do think that the destruction is well written. I like how he talks about the black expanses and the countryside, and maybe this area will be left untouched. And there's even talk where the narrator gets stuck into a um, a destroyed house. And you get a good idea about that layout and what he's having to live through for the time that he's kind of squandered there. So I think that writing style from H.G. Wells is always very strong. If you want to just, you know, read something that lyrically flows along well, I should think you should stick with his novels if you want to read through them, though this isn't my favorite of them. Personally, my favorite of H.G. Wells would actually have to be The Island of Dr. Moreau, which is the only one that doesn't have a good movie. 
So I think that's a little interesting, but I will say this is not a recommendation for me. I think that there are better H.G. Wells novels. I think that even the movie might have done it a little better if you like Tom Cruise. Um, in the end, it's your choice, but thank you for watching and I hope you have a good day.